Nightcast. Stephen Lloyd Gilbreth brings you the current news from the world today and how it relates to Bible prophecy. Understanding the end time events leading to the peaceful world tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Lloyd Gilbreth. Good evening, friends, and welcome to this Thursday night, November 12, 2015 edition of Nightcast. Opening story tonight, there is skepticism as the EU pledges migrant cash for Africa. The 1.9 billion Yankee dollars, or the equivalent of 1.2 billion euros, I'm sorry, that would be 1.2 billion British pound sterlings, European fund to tackle African migration is not sufficient, several African leaders have said after crisis talks with their European counterparts. It was one of several measures European and African leaders agreed on at a summit in Malta to try and reduce the flow of people into Europe. Katya Adler reports. Malta's national graveyard, serene and tranquil today, but filled with anguished crowds back in April at the burial here of some of the 800 migrants drowned in just one night off the Maltese coast. There are two, um, 21 corpses. Graveyard official Eman Bonici was there. It was very emotional because the, so the child was buried in this vault here. Europe failed to save that boy. It's failing now to stop hundreds of thousands more refugees and other migrants trying to cross the Mediterranean. That's why the EU called this, by now its sixth summit on migration this year. It's like trying to repair a leaking dam. Block up the hole in one area and water comes gushing through elsewhere. The migrant route to Europe has moved from Morocco to Libya and now to Turkey. This issue isn't almost over. It's going to be with Europe for years to come. And long-term problems need long-term solutions. So far, the EU's reaction has been chaotic and uncoordinated. But these meetings in Malta are a real attempt at finding a more strategic approach. But will it work? The president of the European Council says it has to, though it won't be easy. We are under no illusions that we can improve the situation overnight. But we are committed to giving people alternatives to risking their lives. Here in Malta, the EU has been working with African leaders, asking them to crack down on people smugglers and offering cash to help improve life in African countries to make Europe less enticing. The response has been lukewarm. What Africa needs today is not charity, it's actually investment. This is what drives society forward, both in Europe and the United States. So Africa is not different. And, and when you talk about the investment, actually, 1.8 billion is not much. Today, the UK pledged a further £200 million for Africa to tackle the root causes of migration. Britain gives more overseas aid than any other European country. But EU partners complain of a lack of solidarity when it comes to dealing with asylum seekers already in Europe. Balkan countries are now managing to move migrants smoothly across borders. Successfully dealing with this crisis means European nations doing what they often find difficult working together. Otherwise, the EU will continue to lose credibility on other continents and amongst its own people. Katia Adler, BBC News, Malta. Now, friends, where would you place this story from tonight's news, our opening story, where would you place it in this chart that we have I'm bringing forward on the screen that shows five of the seven seals from the book of Revelation, the first four now being active. You, I, I'd hate to see anybody try to place this in the fifth seal, the Great Tribulation. That has not yet occurred, although things are underway to rapidly open the door for this seal, the fifth seal. But just looking at the first four on this chart, where would you place this story that we opened with tonight about the migrant problem and the money they're wanting to give to Africa to try to keep people from coming, wanting to come over to Europe. Well, I would place it from what Jesus Christ said over 
between the third and fifth seal. I've labeled it down toward the bottom. I put it that way because the major element or characteristic or actualities of the fourth seal, the fourth seal being depicted in Revelation as a pale horse with a rider whose name is Death, alongside whom rides Hades, Hell, or the Grave. And that's a, that, that, is, that seal is a horse of death. Its primary method of death is, as Jesus Christ put it in a word, loimus, meaning disease epidemics, pestilence, the plagues of Egypt. But the best place to hang the other couple of things Christ said would be happening between the third and the fifth seal is right here on this fourth seal where he said there would be seismus, there would be commotions in the air, gale force winds of all kinds, tornadoes, hurricanes, um, typhoons, etc., and commotions on the ground, such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, wildfires, floods, etc., commotions on the ground. And he said there would be terrace. He said this in Mark 13, verse 8. Terrace meaning roiling waters or trouble, mobs, seditions, and trouble. But not the mega trouble, not the great trouble of the fifth seal, the great tribulation, which is going to be, as Christ put it, a time of trouble so great that no trouble since the beginning of the world has been as bad as what's coming, nor never after. So, back to the fourth seal. Trouble, uh, just all kinds of trouble for nations. That's where I would hang or place this first story from tonight's news. Now, the next story we're going to, while well, I still have the slide up on the screen, I'll just mention, I think we'd put that under, uh, well, we'd put that under trouble too. But let me let you decide that. Let me, let me introduce the next story for us. At least 37 people have been killed and 181 injured in two explosions in the Lebanese capital, Beirut, officials say. The blast hit the southern suburb of, of, and a stronghold, uh, a stronghold of the Shia Hezbollah movement. The blasts were caused by two suspected suicide bombers, according to local media. Lena Sinjab reports from Beirut. Well, basically, after these uh, two suicide bio bomber bombers, the uh, Lebanese authorities are saying that the number of people killed have reached almost 40, with more than 180 injured. This is according to the Lebanese uh, Red Cross. The two suicide attacks took place uh, near a Shiat mosque as uh, people were leaving after prayer. Uh, and this area, Burj al Barajni area, is highly condensed with population there. And as you rightly said, it's a, a Hezbollah stronghold. Uh, most likely people believe here that this is a, a setback or a, um, a reaction towards the war in Syria. But it's also a, a big security break because this area should be completely uh, sealed and controlled by Hezbollah. So to, for these attacks to take place, it's, it's really risky for this area. Okay, friends, I think uh, what I would say, sometimes you've got to put uh, some of these stories in more than one seal. I would, uh, let's put the chart up real quickly. I would place this one in both the fourth seal with trouble and the second seal, which Revelation depicts as a red horse that Jesus Christ described in plain language as war and rumors of war and leading up to world war. And we're now between the recesses of the second and third world, world wars. But the second seal, as Christ put it, includes war, and that would include civil war, war within an area between factions. And this next story also going to relate to the second seal. Kurdish forces have launched what they say is a major offensive to drive, well, also relates to the fourth seal trouble, too. But... Uh, Kurdish, this, but more in the terms of war. Kurdish forces have launched what they say is a major offensive to drive militants of so-called Islamic State out of the town of Sinjar in the northwest of Iraq. 
Sinjar was captured in August last year by the militants who attacked the mainly uh, Yazidi population, killing many of the men and enslaving women and children. Jim Muir reports from the front line. Well, we've come up here to this uh, front line position, just about as close as you can get to uh, Sinjar, uh, to see what the situation in town actually is. The Peshmerga, the Kurdish forces, are obviously massing here. Uh, they've been advancing also from the west and the east, so they've cut off Sinjar uh, from IS point of view uh, from three sides, preparing for a final assault to take the town itself. Ah. Oh, really are close here. <laughs> Uh, cool. uh, so it's saying there are, no, no, there, no, there are snipers here apparently, so we have to be a little bit, a bit careful. Uh, if, um, yeah, so what he's saying is that uh, there's no actual front line. Uh, they don't hold firm positions, they're just moving around. They're, they're just a little bit all over the place. So quite hard, quite hard to get at. <laughs> I feel very happy because this day, uh, like my birthday, I'm very, very happy so much. I'm EZD. Uh, my EZD, religion, EZD. I'm from Karnasur. We are fighting to the ISIS with Peshmerga. So what's happened here is that a house which had been occupied by ISIS uh, has been blown up. This is showing the technique they use time and time again when they're being attacked by the Kurdish forces. Uh, they put mines, they put booby traps uh, in houses, at roadsides and so on. All of this to hold up advances and to cause uh, the maximum possible casualties. So this is not going to be a this is not going to be a short and easy job. Uh, that's one thing for sure. All right, friends, now I've pulled some video from the archive from just a little more than a month ago, October 5, because something in this video report will relate to the one after that will be coming up. In this video report, we actually showed this last month, but I want to show it to you again, and I want you to listen carefully to the reporter with this video. Islamic State militants in northern Syria have blown up another monument in the ancient city of Palmyra, officials and local sources say. Now, last month, the Ark of Tri Triumph was pulverized by the militants who control the city. It's thought to uh, have been built around 2,000 years ago. Frank Gardner has this report from October 5 this year. It survived for nearly 2,000 years. The triumphal Roman arch at Palmyra drew thousands of tourists before Syria descended into civil war. Now, say local residents, Islamic State militants have blown it up. Palmyra, in the center of Syria, was overrun by the jihadists of IS in May. The Arch of Triumph is now the third archaeological site at Palmyra that they've destroyed after posting these pictures of them blowing up other ruins. The Roman arch had no religious significance. It was neither a temple nor a tomb. The destruction of yet more of Palmyra's priceless treasures is a further hammer blow to Syria's cultural heritage. But this is dwarfed by the rising death toll of more than a quarter of a million people killed in that country's conflict. And now the war in Syria looks set to become even more complicated. Russian airstrikes in Syria are now into their second week. They've been targeting all rebels opposing President Assad, including those trained by America. And in the air, there have been some close calls. Turkey says its warplanes intercepted a Russian fighter in Turkish airspace on Saturday. Today, Turkey says its planes were harassed by an unidentified MiG jet fighter. Western governments disagree with Moscow on how best to fight Islamic State or ISIL. We will work with anyone who wants to join us in this struggle, including Russia. But if Russia wants to fight ISIL, it cannot at the same time support Assad. Because Assad, with his barrel bombs and his chemical weapons and his wholesale slaughter of civilians, is the recruiting sergeant for ISIL. But Russia opposes any moves, military or diplomatic, 
to remove Syria's President Assad. With regard to the overthrow of the ruling regime in Damascus, said Russia's foreign minister, that would be a flagrant violation of the UN Security Council resolution. So, with world powers further apart than ever on Syria, there is no sign of a peace settlement in the foreseeable future. Frank Gardner, BBC News. Well, friends, the Kremlin says secret plans for... This is from today's news now. The Kremlin says secret plans for a Russian long-range nuclear torpedo called Status-6 should not have appeared on Russian television news. The leak happened during a report on state-run Channel 1 about President Vladimir Putin meeting military chiefs in the city of Sochi. One general was seen studying a diagram of the devastating, quote-unquote, devastating torpedo system Launched by a submarine, it would create wide areas of radioactive contamination, the document says. The Oceanic Multipurpose Status 6 system is designed to, quote, destroy important economic installations of the enemy in coastal areas and cause guaranteed devastating damage to the country's territory by creating wide areas of radio, radioactive contamination, rendering them unusable for military, economic, or other activity for a long time, the document says. It's true some secret data got into the shot, therefore it was substantially deleted, said Mr. Putin's spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, in future, we will undoubtedly take preventative measures so this does not happen again. The U.S. Defense Department said it had seen the report but would not comment further. We are aware of the video footage, but defer to the Russian Navy as to its authenticity, a Pentagon spokesperson told the BBC. However, the Russian government newspaper later reported details of the weapon without showing the diagram and speculated about a super radioactive cobalt device. So the leak may not have been accidental. A cobalt warhead on the diagram. Let me see if I can bring this forward for you while I mention this. On the diagram, the giant torpedo's range is given as up to 10,000 kilometers. That would be the equivalent of 6,200 miles. And depth of trajectory is up to 1,000 meters. That would be 3,300 feet. It was developed by Rubin, a submarine design bureau in St. Petersburg. It would apparently be launched by nuclear-powered submarines of the 09852 Belgorod and 09851 Khabarovsk series. The torpedo is called a robotic mini-submarine traveling at 100 knots or 185 kilometers per hour, equivalent of 115 miles per hour, which would, quote, avoid all acoustic tracking devices and other traps. Some commentators in Russia and Russian media suggest leak of giant torpedo plan was deliberate. Such a torpedo was envisioned in 1950, or the 1950s, during Cold War by nuclear physicist Andrei Sakharov, later a famous dissident and peace activist. 
Now, here are five points about, about this. The 100 megaton warhead could devastate the United States coast with massive tsunami and intense radiation. Before I mention the other four, friends, I might call your attention to several broadcasts that God's end-time apostle, Herbert W. Armstrong, showed how the main wars that are prophesied to come will not be between the United States and Russia. Now, that doesn't mean Russia might not do something that could do some tremendous damage to the United States and then Europe move in and do the things prophesied that Europe would do. This uh, certainly gives some great power to the people of Russia to, to do some tremendous damage to the United States. Another one of the elements is the Soviet Tsar Bomba was, was the biggest nuclear device ever detonated. It was 58 megatons. Now, this torpedo leak, three more elements of this, the torpedo leak is warning to the United States not to seek nuclear advantage, says Russian military analyst Igor Korachenko. Just before the torpedo diagram came into view in the state television report, Mr. Putin could be heard telling the generals that the United States and its NATO allies were forging ahead with a global anti-missile defense system, quote, unfortunately ignoring our concerns and our offers of cooperation. He said the Western defense project was, quote, an attempt to undermine the existing parity in strategic nuclear weapons and essentially to upset the whole system of global and regional stability. In June, Mr. Putin said Russia would put more than 40 new intercontinental ballistic missiles into service this year. The United States is developing the sea-based ballistic missile defense system, BM, BMD, to counter the perceived threat of short- and medium-range ballistic missiles from Iran or another so-called rogue state. Under the plan, air defense missiles will eventually be sighted on land in Romania and Poland. Mr. Putin dismissed that NATO, that NATO argument, pointing to the international deal agreed this year, imposing limits on Iran's nuclear program. Quote, references to an Iranian or North Korean nuclear missile threat are just used to conceal the true plans. Their goal is to neutralize the strategic nuclear potential of other nuclear states, above all, of course, Russia. End quote. Mr. Putin told the generals in Sochi, a Black Sea resort is where these comments came from. He said Russia would continue developing strategic offensive systems capable of penetrating any anti-missile defense. According to state-run uh, Gazette newspaper there, the destructive power attributed to the new torpedoes warhead would fit the description of a cobalt bomb. That would be a type of thermonuclear warhead with a layer of cobalt-59, which, on detonation, would be transmuted into highly radioactive cobalt-60 with a half-life longer than five years. Such a weapon would guarantee that Everything living will be killed, the paper said. The, the paper said there would not even be any survivors in bunkers. A cobalt bomb has never been tested because of the devastating radi radiation it would unleash. But it can be considered as a means of deterrence, like the the uh, the 
the Perry Metra system, which is on cobalt readiness, which guarantees radi- retaliation with all of Russia's nuclear forces, even if command post and the country's leadership have been annihilated. Friends, this story was to just give you an idea that you might be hearing, you might be thinking that, well, where I am, things are okay. All this war and all is going on somewhere else. And you might be thinking that, you know, well, we've got these peace treaties, these nuclear treaties now that keep the nations from inventing uh, this devastating stuff. Um, So there you have a report that lets you know that stuff is going on. Friends, that's it for this Thursday night. God willing and the creek don't rise, we'll be back again Sunday night with the next edition of Nightcast. We're off Friday night and Saturday night, as you, many of you know. We are on on another channel, on the Sabbath.tv channel on the weekend, at times mentioned on our website on cogtv.org. So one way or the other, God willing and you willing, I'll plan to see you next time. Until next time, this is your host for Nightcast, Stephen Lloyd Gilbert, saying thanks for joining me. And good night, friends. You have been watching Nightcast with Stephen Lloyd Gilbreth. Nightcast can be seen Sunday through Thursday nights here on COGTV.org. Tonight's program is also available anytime on demand in the COGTV.org video archive.